Hey, this is Mike. Thank you so much for choosing this video. Today I'm in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, visiting East Coast Volkswagen, and I'm checking out a 2020 Volkswagen Passat in the R-Line trim level. This Passat is sitting on 235.40 Falcon tires wrapped around 19-inch alloy wheels with a gloss black finish. It also has four-wheel disc brakes with ventilated rotors in the front and solid rotors in the back. The name of this color is Reflex Silver Metallic. And kind of just a regular metallic silver. Nothing super special about that, but it is a nice color in general. Shows off the contours of the vehicle. And also it highlights the trim a little bit better than say black. So here in the front, we do have some chrome here on the grill and the sun's sparkling off the chrome right now. Uh, but here at the bottom, there is a honeycomb portion right in here that allows air to go through, but here on the ends, it's completely blocked off. So there's no wheel well ventilation or anything like that. This is just for looks. Now the headlights are powered by LEDs and you can see the low beam is in a projector housing so you can see a low beam right here with a lens and then this one has a reflector for your high beams you also have an led daytime running light at the bottom looking at the profile you can see most everything is body colored except for the gloss black pillar here in the middle which solidifies the glass now one of the things you'll notice on this vehicle is the wheels really pop out so the very distinct styling and get, catches your eye. When I first saw pictures of this, I'm like, man, those are some, but all I saw was the wheels. The vehicle seemed kind of conservative compared to the wheels. Now, speaking of the wheels, you can see they're directional. So you can see it has a certain pattern that as it spins, you can see the, the, the longer portion here goes forward. So as it's going around in a circle, this side, that longer portion is going forward as the wheel spins. But on the left side, the driver's side, as the wheels spin forward going this way, so you can see that long portion is now in the back of that pattern. So now it's the smaller portion that's going forward. This is what the key looks like, and it's a proximity key. And Volkswagen has used this key for, it's very similar to this anyway, uh, for a long period of time. Um, it's fairly light. It's easy to carry around. It does have a physical key that pops out like a switchblade, which is pretty neat. But in general, you just have to keep this with you and you can use the vehicle 100% as long as it's with you. It has the lock, unlock, the ability to remote start the vehicle and to open up the trunk. There's a panic button here. Let's go ahead and push that panic button and see what happens. All right. And let's go ahead and push the trunk button and it lifts up all the way for you, so that's nice. As long as you have the key with you, it could be in your pocket, in a bag, as long as it's within a close proximity to the outside of the door, you can lock the door by placing your finger over the sensor indicated by this little indentation here. So you can put your finger on that, it'll lock. To unlock it, you simply put your hand behind the handle, and has a sensor back there and allows you access to the vehicle. There's also a physical key cylinder behind this cover. You will need to pry that off if you need to get to it. Okay, so here's the inside of the passenger side door. And it's pretty much all black for the most part. So I'm going to point out a few things here. Um, the soft touch surfaces are right in here, this top portion. So that's a not super soft, but it is soft touch. And then you have another soft touch surface, but it's very, very... It's hard plastic behind a little bit of, tiny bit of uh, like a vinyl material. This is the softest material right here. So your arm rests where you need it, where you're putting your, putting your arm. That's considerably softer than this and this. The rest of it is a hard touch surface here. Nice big bottle holder here in the door. And this passes through so you can get comfortable with your arm possibly. Of the R-Line badging here on the sill plate. Manually adjusted seats here for the passenger. Now these are heated seats and they have some contrast stitching, black synthetic leather with the perforations here, 
and stitching and pretty comfortable seats. All right, so plenty of leg room here, kind of wide open space. The floor, floor mats are not in, in place yet, but you can see some tapering going on here and here, um, but overall just a wide open space for your legs. Does have a, a locking glove compartment. And the dash, is soft touch, kind of rubbery soft, and this is hard touch. These are hard touch there. Has like this accent, but check out that long uh, grill right there. You have your vents in it, but then it just kind of extends all the way across to the other vents, which is looking pretty cool. You'll notice how wide the doors swing open. So the front doors, I mean, it's almost a 90 degree angle. So you have plenty of room getting into the vehicle. Actually, it might actually be a problem sometimes because it swings out so much. When you get in the vehicle, you might have to reach out to grab the door if you have it out that wide. But it does give you that, uh, that access. It's really nice. Same thing with the back doors. Um, seems like they're not quite as swinging wide. Maybe it's just an illusion, but still, really wide and the opening is wide as well so all this is good as far as getting in and out of the vehicle and the inside of the passenger side the rear door here is just like the other one so very similar soft 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 and then hard touch here you have similar type seating surfaces with the black and it's basically a bench seat here in the middle and cup holders and armrest you can lift up up out of the way floor good is down quite a ways so that way you can your knees are not sticking up in the air so much and there's pockets on the back of both front seats and they have a little little bit of space right in there two usb ports which is nice for charging devices significant hump there in the center so center passenger will have to deal with that and you have climate control vents fuel door is here on the passenger side and it opens up like so and you have a traditional cap tether and a place to hang the cap so when you take the cap off there's this little post that you can put right in here like so and it holds it for you while you're pumping gas you're gonna look at the back of the vehicle he has a shark fin antenna and a gloss black up here kind of standing out third brake light is at the base of the rear glass and then you have a deck lid spoiler, which is a gloss black, which I guess kind of matches your antenna there. Little tiny deck lid spoiler, which is pretty cool, I guess. Matches the wheels, I guess, as well, and the trim. LED tail lights, which is nice. Nice, sharp, crisp. You can check out my night videos. I have different uh, vehicles at nighttime, so you can see what they look like. and. The lighting conditions inside and outside of the vehicle so you can check that out on my channel the backup camera is slightly offset just under this s right there and it has some gloss black down here and gloss black and then some chrome accents here and here and you might think those are exhaust tips but they are absolutely not they're just for looks. Uh, the exhaust, you probably saw this in the very beginning of the video, but the exhaust dumps out right over here. So those are just basically for looks. All right, so you saw where I can use the key to open up the trunk, which is really handy that it opens up all the way. But if we wanna open it up, we can just push this button under here right there next to the backup camera you can see the led lights under here um but i have to stop it because it wants to flip up so fast so just keep that in mind when you push that button this wants to flip up on its own so it doesn't you know make sure it doesn't like hit you or knock anything out of your hand or something 
um, it's just spring loaded. Okay, so here's your trunk space, and um, and lowering those seats, you can see right here, uh, these are the little things you have to pull to release and fold the seats. But the trunk space is pretty big. You can see it extends there on the right side, and I'll put all the specs and measurements and all that stuff in the description. You can check all that out. This has some tie downs, pretty looks like pretty robust steel tie downs there in the back and this has the cargo Volkswagen cargo protection system which is like this velcro mat and then you have these little dividers and these have velcro on them and you stick them wherever you want and you can kind of create barriers and stuff and and um, you know keep your stuff from sliding around I guess so much but anyways this lifts up and then under that is a kind of like a thin material right there plastic material i guess like plastic cardboard is what it looks like is your spare tire and tools and i guess you can push some more stuff under here if you need to you know pack some more cargo or whatever underneath it so there is some exposed metal and wires and stuff under here so just to let you know if you're going to cram suitcases or objects back under here this metal um, you know, might scratch your suitcases or whatever. Just keep that in mind as these things kind of popping down and stuff. Um, but anyways, these seats fold down in a 60-40 split so you can add to your cargo space while still maintaining passenger space. Um, or you can fold them both down and really, you know, add to your cargo space when needed. To start it up, as long as you have the keys inside the vehicle, it can be in a bag, in your pocket, whatever, in a cup holder. As long as it's inside the vehicle, you put your foot on the brake, hold it, and push this button. Here's the floorboard in front of the driver's seat. And you notice it has these little posts right here to secure the floor mats, which are not in place yet. And there's your accelerator and brake pedal, looking pretty sporty with the raised rubber grips on the aluminum pedals, pivots here at the bottom for your accelerator. And you have a really nice big footrest here on the left side. So let's go ahead and take a look under the hood. And the latch is pretty interesting because um, it actually, when you shut this door, it goes up against this, this uh, lever. So that way you can't accidentally pull it and open up your hood while you have your door shut, while you're driving or whatever. You do have to have your door open and then you can pull it and release your hood. To open the hood, there is a latch right here in the very center slightly to the right of center put reach in and you lift up on it right there like that that's what you do and it releases the hood and it's kind of a heavy hood it feels like a steel hood so you want to keep that in mind when you're lifting it up and it requires a prop to hold it up and it's right there and it swings up and goes where that little arrow is so there's no insulation or sound uh proofing or anything under the hood it's just bare metal it does have a little bit of a couple seals here so there's a seal on the back side of the engine bay engine compartment and then here in the front um but kind of directs airflow as well as you know keeping the noise out of the cabin now the firewall is has some heat shielding and insulation batteries insulated as well So we're met with another plastic cover. Seems like a common thing nowadays. Let's go ahead and take that off. See if there's any insulation underneath. And there's a little bit of insulation underneath it. Um, so that way it doesn't echo so much. So there's your engine. And so it's a uh, TSI, you notice that on the cover, TSI, turbocharged stratified injection. So you have a turbocharger there in the back and stratified um, is basically layering different technologies stratification um, and it's a direct injection engine you see the coil packs now that i took the cover off uh, but it's a 2.0 liter four-cylinder engine paired to a six-speed automatic transmission oh yeah for those of you who like to change your oil by yourselves there's the oil filter right there isn't that nice and easy to get to you just take the cover off now unscrew it, there's the cap and then the filters inside there. The blind spot indicators are here on the side mirrors. They also serve as indicators for your rear cross traffic alert. 
But the inside of the driver's side door is just like the other side, except for it has a few more buttons. You have all one touch up and down power windows. So you just touch it one time, it goes down and up. Door lock controls, your side mirrors can be adjusted here and the ability to open up the trunk is here. Power seat for the driver, of course they have, uh, they always, the driver's seat's always one up, the passengers almost always, um, but it is able to go up and down and all that stuff and power lumbar adjustment. And don't forget, these are heated seats here in the front. To the left of the steering column, you have your dimmer switch for your interior gauges, headlight controls with an automatic function. Then you have a storage compartment right here. It's pretty big. It's almost as big as the darn uh, glove compartment over there. Big door anyway, and it has this compartment right here. It's nice. You also have a tilt and a telescoping steering column. There's the lever. Okay, here we are on the inside checking it out. And I have the seat all the way back and all the way down. And I'm six feet tall and it's a little bit too far back. So my legs can go straight out and uh, there's plenty of room here. Plenty of uh, side, side room here on the left side as well as the right. So you can see where the pedal is in relationship to the console so it's not conflicting or anything. So the steering wheel is a leather wrap steering wheel pretty sure it's a synthetic type leather flat here on the bottom you do have some gloss black and it has the grips here at the top and it's pretty much a fairly hard steering wheel it's not super soft or anything um, and it's not really thick it kind of has a little sharp edge and round at the back and more sharp on this side and um, so that way it kind of helps out with the the hardness but um it's not a it's not a soft steering wheel so if you prefer a soft steering wheel this is not it so looking at the controls here uh the cruise control is here on the left side and this is the adaptive cruise control and when you turn it on the lane keep assist turns on as well as the adaptive cruise control part so you can set the distance between you and the vehicle in front of you using that button this is your volume for your radio. This changes through your presets on your radio or your audio tracks, depending on what you're listening to. And then these buttons, uh, you have a voice recognition and a Bluetooth answer your phone calls and hang up button right there. Uh, these buttons in this up and down corresponds with that little screen in the middle. We'll get to that in just a second. Windshield wiper controls are here on the right side. Turn signals here on the left. And the very end of the turn signal is this button right here, and that's a shortcut button. Um, when you push that on the screen, it pops up your, to where you can turn on different safety features. So you can get to it, you know, using your regular menu, but that's just a little shortcut. Okay, so looking at the gauges, it has the red accents, but generally it's a black background, white lettering, so you can focus on it fairly easy. There's not a lot of business, busyness, it's simple uh, for the most part, and you have the um, RPM tachometer here on the left side, engine coolant temperature, your fuel gauge there on the right side, and then your uh, speedometer. Now it mixes in the kilometers per hour and the the, the, the speedometer over here kind of kind of blends in a little bit too busy in my opinion. Um, but anyways, you have a digital speedometer there in the center. You also have a digital clock and outside temperature, trip, and odometer, and what gear you're in. So we're gonna use these buttons here so you can go side to side to different pages, and then you can go up and down like so, and then you make selections with that. So let's go down, so you can see this is the first page. You have other information here that you can go through um, besides just a digital speedometer. Scrolling to the right, this is where you'll find your adaptive cruise control. So when you push this button here, we can set the distance between us and the vehicle in front of us. I like a far distance, so I'd leave it all the way out there. That's what I would do. And then scrolling to the right again. Uh, so this would be whatever your radio is doing, whatever your phone's doing. And this is that assistance button. So that shortcut button just goes straight to this screen. So we could turn on or off different safety features. Uh, I guess safety features, convenience features, um, blind spot, lane assist, 
and rear tra traffic. Now the lane assist, to me, my in my experience, that's um, could be a safety hazard if you're not used to it because it's actually going to tug on the steering wheel a little bit and it's something you have to get used to. But anyways, I don't think it's bad. It's, you just have to get used to it. All right, and then there's your settings here. You can scroll through that. Next is it goes back to your digital, digital speedometer and that first screen that we saw. So that's kind of a quick rundown of what that little screen's all about and how to use it using these buttons here. It does have little paddle shifters uh, kind of back here. So you have the up shift and down shift here. So you can change to the gears if you want to. And they are attached to the steering wheel. So they, as you turn, they'll stay right there. They're not attached to the column like some vehicles. All right. So there's your four-way flashers. So here's your touch screen, and you notice it has these soft touch buttons here on the sides that are fixed. So we have radio, which we're in now, and uh, you can go through your presets and all that stuff. There's different audio sources here, AM, FM, satellite radio there, and then your media. Uh, so your SD card, you have an SD card, you have Bluetooth audio um, that you can you know, play music through. selection here so USB Bluetooth audio and SD card those are your these are grayed out because there's nothing plugged into them you compare your phone voice recognition and all these different um, you know soft touch buttons so they stay fixed Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is available you just plug in your device so you have App Connect you can right trying to get to it right there so you can actually plug in a USB and look at images here which is pretty cool there's your radio so basically it's just kind of the soft touch buttons here um, but here on the screen and you kind of scroll through and also I want to point out when you I don't know if you noticed when I move my hand in front of the screen like that it has little sensors right in here that um, pops up information at the bottom that you can go to that's relevant to whatever screen you're in okay so as a traditional volume knob and then this one you can change through your presets or your radio stations depending on where you're at like if you can um, if you have just regular audio source it's not going to do that but this is like a tuning knob I guess you could say in traditional terms um, so you have a dual zone climate control driver and passenger so you can adjust the temperatures here fan speed where you want the air to blow and this is your heated seat controls so it has a high medium low so three stage recirculate the air you can sync both the driver and passenger you can turn that off if you like to have them independent little storage compartment under here and it's rubberized at the bottom so this is where you'd put your phone if you want to use your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto you put your phone right there and plug it in that way it will access the system and you have a 12 volt power supply over here as well okay so here's a shifter we already saw the push button start but there's the shifter let's go ahead and put it in reverse so we can see the backup camera uh, the backup camera is extremely distorted because of the wide angle view um, and it's not the best clarity, but you can get a good idea of what's behind you. Continuing down, we have neutral, drive, then you have a sport mode. You will have to push this button and take it down in sport mode. Or if you're in drive, you go to the right, and this is where you can change gears manually if you like. So forward is plus, back is minus. You can always go back and drive anytime you want. Basically, that is similar to a ratchet shifter. It kind of replaces the um, the paddle shifters on the steering wheel, whichever is your preference. There's your handbrake, parking brake, cup holders. This has like a rubbery back uh, um, bottom that you can take out and clean and put back in, which is pretty neat. And one's deeper than the other, so depending on what cup you have, and these are spring-loaded. 
to accommodate for different size cups. Has a little storage pocket there. Your armrest is able to move forward and back. It lifts up, has a little clip on the underside, and then you have a little storage compartment. So this is your junk drawer of the vehicle, and there's a felt lining at the bottom, and that's about it. This is kind of rubbery soft. It's not super cushy soft, but it is soft. Rear view mirror is auto dimming. So it's actually auto dimming right now because I have the light, the shade of this light sensor back here. Now if you can see that. Have some tap lights. You can turn on all the interior lights, like here, turn them all off or have them turn on with the door by having it in the center position here. This is for your sunroof. We'll get to that in just a minute. There's some roadside assistance buttons here. Place to put your shades and it's rubbery on the inside here and here. Not super big, so if you have big Hollywood sunglasses, they might not fit. The visor has like a felt covering and has a mirror with the light. Looks like a standard bulb in there, yellowish. Has a little place to clip, put your registration or whatever. This is like a vinyl material. The roof is like a cloth. Okay, so let's check out the sunroof. Now the sunroof, it has a shade that covers 100% of the light, which I like. Uh, I don't like, um, I think that's a good idea. So sometimes you just don't want the sun on you. Go ahead and open that up. So now we can vent it. Close it. Open it up. All right, that's as far back as it goes. No, it goes a little bit further back. Okay, there we go. So you have to turn this knob, basically. You turn the knob to move it backwards, and then you tilt the knob up to tilt it. All right, let's look at the visibility in the back. So it does have some pillars there. Now the pillars do have little triangle windows in it, which helps out a little bit. Um, but we do have technology like the backup camera, the blind spot detection system, rear cross traffic alert, all that stuff to help you out. Backup camera. All right, there you have it. Thank you for watching and thank you to East Coast Volkswagen here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And I'll see you guys next time.